This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, this is the second lecture on double entry bookkeeping. In the previous lecture, we did example one and I recorded every transaction uh, in these T accounts, in the accounts in the nominal ledger. We've come to the end of the month. Uh, and the first thing I need to do is what we call strike a balance on every account. Uh, for instance, uh, if we look at purchases, we had two transactions. We bought goods for 500, we bought goods for 600. Uh, in real life, obviously, more than just be two transactions during the month or the year, there could be 2,000. But I need to know what the total is on the account. I need to know what the total is on payables and so on. And so we balance the account. Now it may be very obvious here, there are only two transactions. Purchases, the total I can do in my head is 1100. Uh, payables, oh it's 600, it was 600, we paid 400, oh, it's 200, easy. However, whether you have two transactions or 2,000, there is a neat way of what we call balancing or getting the balance on the account. And do watch it. It's something a lot of people find very odd the first time. Uh, and it's not because you will be balancing accounts in the exam. But you'll see later plenty of questions you could be given at your account and asked to do things with it and it would have been balanced the proper way. And to show what I mean, I'll do payables first. I need to know what the net figure is on the account at the end of the month, how much is owing. And what we do is leave a space and do what I call total lines. And you add up the big side. Now this is going to sound very childish, but it is important. At the moment, the bigger of the two sides is the credit side, and the total is 600. And you put the same total on the other side. Well, obviously the debit side doesn't add up to 600 at the moment. You fill in the missing figure. And what is the missing figure? To get a total of 600, well, 6 minus 4, the missing figure is 200. And that 200 is the balance on the account. And what we then do is rewrite that balance always on the opposite side. Now again, I'll deal with the others shortly. It becomes automatic. It is so important. You make both sides add up to the uh, biggest. The missing figure is the balance. You rewrite on the opposite side. Now, the reason we rewrite it on the opposite side, think about it. We did have a credit of 600 and a debit of 400. Well, we've now effectively replaced what's there with a net figure. The net was a net credit of 200. You know, everything above those lines, in a sense, we can now ignore. All I've done is replace one credit of six and a debit of four with the net credit of 200. Uh, let me do it with purchases. Again. Do your total lines, add up the big side, and obviously the big side here is the debit side, it's 1100. Put the same total on the other side. Other side doesn't add up to 1100, fill in the missing figure. The missing figure is 1100, the balance. And then put it on the opposite side below the total lines, and by all means abbreviate. 
And again, above those lines, effectively, we can ignore one. What I've done, surely, is I've replaced two little debits, 500, 600, with one big debit of 1,100. Uh, before I go any further, uh, when you're looking at questions in revision kits and things, you might see against it balance CF, BF. It doesn't matter, it's old fashioned, uh, but don't be confused. Uh, CF simply means carried forward, BF means brought forward. But you won't be tested on that, it doesn't matter. Or in fact, it, it really is old fashioned. Instead, you might see CD and BD. CD is carried down, BD is brought down. Uh, but again, I never write it. There's no need to write it. It's old fashioned and you wouldn't be tested on that anyway. Uh, but let's do it for all of them. Uh, except when there's only one figure as, the, as there is there, for example. If there's only one figure, there's no need to strike the balance because we already know the total is a credit of 5,000. Uh, car, the total is a debit of 1,000. But if there's more than one figure, we must strike the balance. So sales has two figures. Off we go again. The big side adds up to 1,700. Make both sides add up to 1700. We need uh, there's a missing figure on the debit side of 1700, the balance. Rewrite on the opposite side. Uh, two little credits would be replaced by one big credit. Uh, receivables. The big side is the debit side. 900. Uh, the credit side. There's only 500, the missing figure of a balance. 9 minus 5 is 400. Debit 9, credit 5, and a net debit we've ended up with of 400. Drawings rent of only one figure on them. We've done those two. Car, capital, one figure. Ah, oh, the remaining one is cash. This, you may need to do some playing with your calculator here, but uh, the big side is the debit side. The total is 6,300. At the moment, um, the debits add up to 15, 17, 21, 2,200. And so the missing figure to make it add up to 6, 3 is 4,100, the balance. So uh, I have said, although you won't be writing up tier counts, there are plenty of places later where Again, they could give you a tier count for something, there'd be a mistake in it, you have to sort it out and so on. So it's vitally important you know how it would have been balanced. That's what the tier counts will look like. That's the way we balance them. All right, before I pause this lecture, because again, I don't want to make them too long, Having taken those balances, before we go any further, there's a very, very obvious little check we can make on ourselves. Because in real life, there are lots of mistakes you could have made. You know, in real life, when you're doing thousands and thousands of transactions, if you're doing them by hand, it's so easy to make mistakes. You know, we bought a car for a thousand. Fine, credit, cash, a thousand. Then you have to go through the book and debit car, and maybe my mistake, you debit car with a hundred. You know, it may seem silly, but it's an easy mistake to make if you're doing thousands of these every day, and it'd be wrong. Or again, you may buy a car, credit cash a thousand, you're rushing through the pages, 
Ah, and you accidentally put it on the wrong side of car. Should be on the debit, you put it on the credit. It's wrong. Now, of course, you're not going to make that sort of mistake, but in real life, people do. And as I say, there's a very, very obvious little check to make sure we haven't made that sort of mistake. And it's something called, paragraph six, the trial balance. And all this is, as you'll see, is a little check having got the balance on every account. We'll simply list them on a piece of paper. It's not a T account, this is a little check. We'll have a piece of paper, we'll add a debit credit, and we'll simply list the balance on every account. Let's run through them. Cash, we ended up with a debit balance of 4,100. Listed. I'll do two at once to save going up and down. But capital, we ended up with a credit balance of 5,000. Car, a debit balance of 1,000. Let's list them. Capital was a credit balance of 5,000. Car, a debit balance of 1,000. I say I'll do two at once, otherwise I'll you start feeling sick if I go up and down too much. But purchases, we end up with a debit of 1100, payables, a credit of 200. Uh, rent, debit 200, sales, credit 1700. Nearly there. Receivables debit 400, drawings debit 100. And so I've listed every balance. And surely, if things, if you've done things correctly, since every debit must equal debits, credit, debit, credit, the total of the debits should equal the total of the credits. The debits, what do they add up to? Uh, 4151, uh, 6264686695, They do add up. A quick little check. They add up, so I'm happy. Uh, we could throw the piece of paper away. In practice, we tend to keep it. You know, uh, companies have auditors who come and check their accounts. I think they probably want to see this trial balance. Um, but it's just this quick check. And you see, I said before, a mistake you could have made. Buy the car. Maybe we credited cash properly with a thousand, but only debited car by a hundred in error. Well, fine, if car was only a hundred, the two sides wouldn't add up. You'd know it was a mistake and you'd have to go and check. Uh, I also said another mistake. You could have credited cash a thousand, the car, quite properly. But by mistake, credited the car instead, which is wrong. Well, again, if you'd done that, the trial balance wouldn't add up you know there was a mistake, you'd have to go and find it. So it is a way of checking that the deb that every debit did have a credit, you know, that we've done that bit right. Uh, again, you won't be preparing a trial balance in your exam, but almost certainly it, you'll be tested on knowing what it is, what it means, what it's there for. Uh, so I hope I've made sense. However, and if you want to write in the space just above paragraph seven, it's not a perfect check because there are plenty of mistakes that could have been made 
and the trial balance would still, the two sides would still be equal. Now, it's a pity we're not in a room together because I would ask you to suggest mistakes. It might be an idea, I, I bet you don't, but it might be an idea to pause the lecture for a few minutes and have a think yourself, write down if you, any mistakes you can think of where this would still add up. You know, and then switch on again and listen to it. But let me go through, it won't take long. So, I appreciate these are mistakes that the trial balance would not discover. Well, one, I think, fairly obvious one is where um, a transaction has been missed completely. You bought a car, but you made no entry at all. No debit, no credit. Well, the cash should be a thousand too high, car wouldn't appear, but it would still add up. Another one. Uh, both entries of the same wrong amount. Think of the car again, it was a thousand. We've entered a thousand. Debit, uh, car, credit, cash. But suppose in a hurry we misread the bill and we entered it as a hundred. Credit, cash, a hundred. Debit, car, a hundred. Well, both accounts are wrong, but the debits will still equal the credits. Another one. Uh, both entries on the wrong side. I'll keep using the car as an example. But the correct entry for the car, credit, cash, debit, car. That's what we did. But suppose by mistake, you debit, cash, credit, car. It's wrong. The cash figure's wrong, the car figure's wrong. But because the debit does equal the credit, the trial balance will still work. Uh, what else? An entry to the wrong account. We got a car, credit cash, debit car. Correct. Suppose by mistake, we credit cash a thousand, and debit telephone a thousand. So there's no car anymore, but you've got telephone at a thousand. It's wrong. But of course, it would still add up. All right, just one more for a special reason, which may seem a bit odd. Two or more mistakes. where the net effect is zero. So last one, and then, you know, I'll, I'll leave this lecture. What I mean there, the car was a thousand, so suppose we went credit cash a thousand, which was correct, and by mistake, we only debited the car a hundred. If that was the only mistake, the trial balance wouldn't work. The debits wouldn't equal the credits. You know, there's a 900 mistake. But suppose there'd been another entry, which I made a mistake as well, and that was 900 mistake. Uh, you know, maybe, not this question, but maybe another entry, oh, was debit cash, 2,500. No, that's not going to work. Help, help, help. Oh, I'll write it will. A bit silly here. 
uh, but it was sales and I credited sales with 3,400. It's not a mistake to have made, but even so, the difference is 900. But I think you see what I'm doing. If we got two mistakes of 900 opposite ways, come to add up and they'd cancel out. The trial balance would still add up. Now, you may think that, oh, so imagine that's not going to happen. You know, I mean, all right, technically, there could be two or three mistakes where the net effect was zero, we've got to agree, but it's extremely unlikely. But what is likely is this, or used to be. It's different now with computers. Computers don't make this sort of mistake. But when you're doing things by hand, clearly it's easy to make mistakes. And in real life, I remember the days, you know, I was uh, an accountant before computers were invented, certainly for business. And you'd uh, get a trial balance, and there wouldn't just be, you know, 10 accounts, there'd be a thousand accounts. And you add it all up, and you're in a big business, the total comes to several hundred thousand, and you find there's a difference of five dollars. You know, I remember the first job I, when I was training, first job I went on, I was told to uh, check a trial balance, to add it up, check the addition. And this is before calculators, it shows how old I am. Uh, and I didn't know what a trial balance even was. It was before I'd got sent on the courses. And in those days, in England, it was pounds, shillings and pence. So, I mean, it was all very complicated, adding up. And this trial balance was something like five pages long. And I kept adding it up and got different totals. And I wasn't told the two totals should have been the same. But anyway, the point I'm getting at is this. Clearly, if they don't add up, there must be a mistake and you go and look for it. But if the total is 6.9 million, and the other side is 6.9 million and $5, The chances are you're going to say, well, we don't really care about five dollars. I mean, a business that's that big, it's 6.9 million. Five dollars is nothing, you know. The danger is, oh, let's forget the five dollars. Well, of course, if it was just one mistake of five dollars, I wouldn't be worried. But the danger is you go through and look and you find a mistake of $200,000 and you think, oh, no. If there's one mistake of 200,000, since the final difference is only five, there must be another mistake of 205,000. And of course, then you've got to keep looking. Uh, but that's the danger, that what looks a tiny difference, nothing to worry about, could be two or more huge mistakes. Well, there's a name for them, we call them compensating errors. Uh, anyway, after a long enough, so we'll stop this lecture here. Uh, appreciate though, we've recorded every transaction, we've taken the balance, we've done our trial balance, this little check. I'm going to say file that now. Uh, but we now, now, now we know it balances, now we need to carry on and actually produce our financial statements. We need to what we call close off the accounts. So I'll use the same example, keep the tier accounts with you. In the next lecture, I'll show you how we close off and actually arrive at our financial statements.